Okay, we're going to record this, guys, so um, let's get started. Um, hey, Veronica. Hey, Clay. Let's, uh, let's get rolling here, uh, and then we'll get, um, we'll get this recorded for you guys and put it on the website to, for review. So let's go over the, uh, first of all, um, the workspace. This workspace is up and on um, our website, so uh, if you need to plug in the workspace, um, this exact workspace with the market profile over here also, hiding behind here. That profile is right there also. Um, it's automatically put on for you guys. Just click on it, and this will download, uh, the workspace will download. So um, this is part uh, three. We'll get into a little bit more um, of the indicator and strategy today. And then uh, four, we're really just going to go over the strategy next week. and. Um, and how to use the auto on a touch base on that today. But I'm going to do a whole series because I really need to spend a whole um, 45 minutes going over that. But let's go over the, the, the basics of what we look for and do a recap real quick, about a 10-minute recap of what we do and what we're looking for um, in these markets. So let's, let's take a look at the, uh, of, of the uh, first chart that we have up here. Now, we have a, a 120. 12020 Uni Rinko. I got three days back. That's on our workspace. And the idea is, is when you get into this zone, if it's a red, if they are red dots, it's a sell zone. If you get into the red sell zone, you're looking for a reversal. If you are green, you get into the green buy zone, you're looking for a reversal. Okay? So how can you tell if it's going to be one or two things? So let's do a quick recap, and then we'll move a little bit further into strategy, how to use the auto, all that stuff. Um, first is a full retracement zone, or zone retracement. And what that is, is you're letting price actually get inside of the zone. You have a upper zone and a lower zone. It's getting inside or even touching the zone. So if that happens, that's called a full zone retracement. Okay? So a full zone retracement, that's our first trade setup. Now, how do you know it's a full zone retracement? One, um, these are our ATRs. Either it's going to be red or green. If it's red, we're looking to sell. Or short, the market look, is looking to go down. If it's green, the market is looking to go up. Buy retracements green, sell retracements red. So... We can use the oscillator that I have already down here uh, programmed into the workspace to know if it's a full retracement. A full retracement is comprised of this magenta line getting above 80. So when we're above 80, when we are above 80, then we want to look to get inside of the zone and look for a short setup. So if we are above 80 and we're inside the zone, we're looking for a short setup. If we get inside of, a, I mean, get above the zone, I mean above 80, and we're inside or touching the zone, I like getting inside the zone or right at it. I know a lot of you trade the NASDAQ futures. It sometimes would just touch right on this lower upper and then go right, roll over. And then we go over here again. Um, we get above 80 and we touch the zone. So that's a full retracement zone, all right? And what that is is just we're looking for a pullback or retracement inside a high probability area for a reversal. Now, the reversal uh, can, can happen two ways uh, as far as getting into a full zone retracement. You can look for a red reversal bar, and then your stop is two ticks above that swing. Red reversal bar here. If you trade off a longer a longer time frame, oops, let me get that off there. Sorry. Get that off. So if we are trading off of a larger time frame, you can use a red reversal. Red reversal. Actually, the arrow fired there on the larger time frame. And then here's your red reversal, right? So you can use that as a entry technique if you want to trade off of a larger time frame. Now, the one thing that is required, okay, is we got to have what's called a WPT, where the rolling position traders are getting caught with speed bars. 
Now, this is a larger time frame. This is a full retracement into a larger time frame, a 12020. Now, the 12020 I like to use on the following markets. And here we go. Um, it'd be the ES and Q, RTY, YM. Um, we got the, uh, uh, the Russell. And then we got, um, we also have your, uh, let's see what else we got. ESNQ, oh, the Russell 2000, and what other ones I look at over here? Oh, the CL, sorry, and crude oil. So it can be crude oil, and also it works on gold if you want gold to GC. Pretty much any futures, but, but those are the primary 120 by 120 that you can look at. Those are your primary markets right there, you know. So, but... What you can do, after you get into a full retracement down here into this zone, since it's a larger time frame, you can check down to a smaller time frame. And I have this in the room because this smaller time frame, what I'm looking for now, I'm looking for this automated arrow to fire. Now, these arrows are automatically uh, drawn, will be drawn for you after a WPT comes in, meaning an opposite color speed bar. So if I'm a red, if I'm a red ATR, you see these green boxes that are forming. That's telling me it's trying to catch the counter trend traders. So look for possible reversal. Wait for the opposite color bar to come in, which will be your arrow. Uh, arrow, I'm sorry, and that would be the possible entry. So if you look at this, if we look, we come up to um, 11 or uh, 15.25. So 15.25 would be actually. Let me even scan this down. Let's come back here. We come up to a full retracement at 15.12. So at 15.12, consequently, you're getting into the full retracement. Now, once you're inside the full retracement, if you want to trade off a smaller time frame, this is a 113.13, right? This is a 120.20. It's a 113.13. So the word in 13.13, the ideal is you're getting a smaller stop, a couple ticks above the swing high. So if you have a 13 Unirinko, you're looking at around 15 to 16 tick stop. Okay, and this works on the minis and also the big contracts. So then what we want to do, if we're into a full retracement, we can check down to my smaller time frame, which I have in the live room. I have my larger one to the left, my smaller one to the right, is wait for an arrow to fire once you get into that full retracement. So at 15.12, you're coming in. 15.11, here you're coming up. Here's your speed bars. Speed bars are coming in. Close, close, close. Your arrow fires right at the swing high, and that is your entry bar. All right, that's using a 124 retracement with a smaller time frame entry. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to 1522. We're coming up. We have speed bar coming up, coming up. We've got the speed bar at the top. At 1522, what do we have over here? Do we have speed bars coming in? We got green, green, green. We're trying to catch the rolling position counter trend traders. It's printing green bars, looking for that retracement. We know we're in a full retracement because we're above 80. We're getting into the zone. So now we're going to look for the arrow. The arrow fires, and there's your entry right there also. So you can do this. All right, we can even go back to this full retracement up here. That happened at 15.09. 1509 is up here. It got into the full retracement. There's your full retracement touching the zone. And look how it tested right there at the zone. The arrow automatically fired at 1510. And a, a manual fill or live fill would be the low of that bar, 39.48 and a quarter. And it went as low as 39.31. So you're looking at 17. 16 half, 17 S&P point potentials just on that swing right there alone. Now, what some traders will do is they'll use these unis off the, off the longer time frame as this. So let's say you get short, and you're short this, and your live fill would be around, the, if you get into the smaller time frame, it would be at that level, 48, what, a quarter right there. So a lot of traders will trade the unis, and they will use this, They'll go two bars back. So let's say this is your entry. See where your entry was here a second ago. Your entry would be the low of this bar, because you always get filled at the low if you manually trade it, 39, 48 and a quarter. 
So we go here, 39.48 and a quarter would be the, let me get it here. So 39.48 and a quarter, let me put it in. 39.48 and a quarter would be there. So there's your fill, okay? There's your fill at the full retracement using a 113.13 pull-in. Now, since there's your fill, what you can do is you can go two back, count them from the uni, you can go two back, make sure you don't touch, so two is showing, and there's your stop. So as price moves down, and it keeps moving down and down and down and down and down, you can manually just adjust your stop, two unis back, two unis back, two unis back, you can just keep adjusting your stop if you want to do that. This is manual trading, of course. I'll show you how to do automated trading with this if you elect to do that. But that's a good way to do it off the 120. The 120 is a great way. You catch some big, big possible moves that way. Now, so you can use, like I said, you can use a larger time frame when you're inside the zone to fire in using the smaller time frame at these arrows when they fire in a full retracement. All right, so that's what that smaller time frame is for, and that's what this is for on full retracements, okay? So a full retracement, like I said, is categorized as getting a uni, I mean a, um, a right here, an oscillator that goes above 80, goes above 80, goes above 80, goes above 80, and you're getting at or inside the zone, all right? Now, I'm going to show you entry techniques, how you can use limit orders to fire in these with less risk. So... Let me show you what a momentum trade is first. So that's a full retracement trade, and then we're going to go into a little bit more advanced techniques than just hitting the bid or hitting the offer. We don't want to do market orders. Market orders will get you a bad fill. So let's just do this right now. That's a full retracement. That's a full retracement. Getting inside the zone, either off the 120.20 with a larger stop or using a smaller stop, getting inside the zone and checking down to our smaller time frame where it fires these arrows automatically like it did here at the close on these setups where you get these uh, trades that fire off, okay? So that being said, let's go over uh, what else is included here, and I'll show you something else that works well. So that's a full zone retracement. Now, I have a setup called the MOMO. Now, the MOMO, and this is in the first two videos. I just want to review this real quick, and I want to move on from here. A MOMO is categorized as momentum has come in the market. I'll show you this morning. That'd be two beautiful momentum plays. They really shot up on the EES. So there's MOMO. And then we got the full retracement. So I don't, I don't care what market you look at. All right. These markets right here. Or... Any stock, future, mic micros, future micros, currency, or crypto markets. It's the same setup on all of them. It doesn't matter what market you're looking at. These two setups occur over and over and over on a daily basis. Okay, either you're going to get a full retracement or you're going to get a momentum retracement. It's going to be one of the two. All right, so that works on all futures, futures, all these futures, stock futures, uh, future micros, currency, or crypto markets. So, and I'm sorry, Forex. It works on Forex also. The only thing that doesn't work on Forex is market profile. All right, so what is a Momo trade then? What a momentum trade is, is if you if the oscillator down here does not get above 80. So let's say the oscillator is moving up. We're getting a retracement. Green bars are coming in. I'm not at the zone here, so it's not called, considered a full retracement sell. This is called a full retracement. So once if these moving averages right here that I have put in on the chart, if they do not cross, they, they cannot intersect, and this white line cannot cross up the magenta. 
if it cross if it comes up to it and this oscillator does not go above 80 then you have what's called a momentum sell in the market you should see a sharp steep sell off and it happened in crude oil a lot today crude oil is on fire with those today that's called a momo momentum setup once again you can look for an arrow to fire in your shorter time frame here or wait for your arrow to reverse. So at 1530, at 15, what was it? Uh, 1530, 37, you can fire in. You can either take a reversal bar here on a smaller time frame or look to fire in right there. Uh, right at your larger time frame with this with a stop above two ticks above the swing high. So that's your two that's your two setups. You're either going to get a full retracement, which are these guys right here, right? This is a full retracement inside the zone, inside the zone, inside the zone, inside the zone. Or you're getting outside the zone and you're getting what's called a momentum. All right, now the momentum has to have this oscillator below. I mean, it can it can get above 80 just a little bit, but I like it to stay below. I'll show you an extreme buy or extreme sell. This is an extreme sell momentum. So I got a full retracement here. This is short on the ES. Like I said, one of these two setups should happen all day long. So here's your full retracement sell. You can get in right there with the oscillator above. There's your reversal bar or use a smaller time frame to pop in. But this is what's called an extreme Momo cell because I've got the MAs don't touch when the green bar comes in. And my oscillator is below 80, but look, it's below 20. If you ever get this and you are a red ATR, this an extreme cell. So this would be a Momo cell. All right. And some of these are pretty brisk and some, some are pretty fast. It's called a Momo cell. But I like it because the oscillator is even below 20%. That's called an extreme Momo cell. If I go back to today, this morning, I want to show you what an extreme buy would be. If I look at the buy setup, look at these two Momo trades. So I've got three potential momentum trades there's a momentum trade there's a momentum trade because i got a pullback red bars in an uptrend green atr red reversal bars but look at my oscillators below now i can't get below 20. i gotta stay above 20 when the green reversal bar comes in which it does that indicates price strength and then the market explodes all right it tries to go here again with another one, but then it grinds down into a full retracement buy, and then she explodes. All right, so this is a blow-off momentum rally right here. It's momentum's coming in the market. This is momentum, all right? These are momos. So these are momo trades, or momentum trades. And the one over here is a for retracement. Some traders just like only taking momentum trades when you're below LVA and HVA on market by market profile, which I'll show you because that's extreme selling pressure, extreme buying pressure. And here's my full retracement, full zone retracement. Okay. So there's my full zone retracement as far as that goes. So what you can do is you can use either the Momo trades when you got momentum in the market. When you get outside of LV and HVA, that's a great time to look at these. In fact, when we fell hard yesterday, look at this. Look at the S&P just crumble. These, this is how, how cool this indicator is. I'm picking this up. Look at the slide in the S&P. There's your Momo setup. There's your Momo setup. Look how far down the S&P, and you could have trailed this guy. Look how far down it fell. That live would have been the low of that bar, 
3090.97 to 44. All right, 53 S&P points, right? Potential just off that setup, but it had two setups. So you were two for two on the Momo coming down. It slid really hard. So you're taking small risk for larger possible return. All right, because you know where your stop placement is. It's got to be two ticks up above the swing. So that is Momo at its best, right? Great Momo trading. Same thing happened in the morning. In the morning, I, I went from a full retracement to a momentum retracement. So if you look at, uh, what time was it? There it is. So I went from a full retracement. Remember, it's got to touch in the zone, which it did. It's got to get into the zone. I don't like these ones that don't get into the zone or at the zone. Because my zone is, here's our high probability zone. So this is a full retracement at 8.45 in the morning, and it went right into a MOMO. Moving averages didn't cross. My oscillator did not get above 80. More importantly, it didn't get above 20. That means extreme selling pressure. So here we go again. Then we come into a MOMO, but is that a full retracement? Okay? So that's how this works. Here's again. Here again, you get your oscillator coming in. There's your full retracement. It M topped right at the high. Look at that slide. Look how the zone is catching these moves. And then you can catch the MOMO after the zone hits to get a little momentum. All right? So now, like I said, before we look at entry techniques and how to do some other things, I'll go to oil today. And just to show you, it doesn't matter what market you trade. It's the same exact setup. So the one thing I did add in with you, with you guys, I added in supply demand lines. And this will be on the, this will be on the workspace, the automated workspace. But these automatic supply, supply demand lines automatically draw in for you. And they're support and resistance. All right? The first ones that come up are major support and resistance. You can see this one's never tested. Everybody knows that I like to educate. The first test is the best. The second test is great. Third test, it tends to break through. I like using these supply demand lines for a break, retest, continuation. But So what I do is I like to see them come right into the zone on a full retracement and give me what? Confluence. It happens a lot. It happens where you'll break through this demand line Old demand now becomes new supply. Any trader that knows anything about supply demand will tell you this. Old demand that got broke becomes now new supply. So just old support becomes new resistance. Well, what happens is, is if you got a supply line there that was an old demand that broke here, that automatically draws in for you, then you know that if you come into the zone at a full retracement, you got confluence, and those are sweet. You'll see a lot of them come up in the market. I like that. So that's something I did add, the supply-demand lines. Um, so, you know, you can, uh, those things will just automatically draw for you. You're good to go as far as supply-demand. Now, the one thing about supply-demand is, is it if you break one level, you tend to, if you retest that level and you roll over, you tend to go down to the next level. If it just comes back up through without rolling back over with a sell-off bar, then it'll probably come back into deeper retracement. But I like him to give me confluence. Okay? So crude oil is the same way. You know, it just it's the same exact setup. You're looking for full retracements into the zone and you're looking for continuation. So here's 850 this morning. Again, crude oil just exploded out of my zone, came down to my zone. Full retracement zone, got a reversal bar right there. There's your small stop inside the zone. And then what does it do? It comes in. If you're getting these big pronounced moves, you're probably going to get a momentum setup when you, right when you get outside of a zone. This is a momentum setup. It stays above 20%, which we want. So this is a buy. Green reversal is a buy right there. Moving averages didn't cross. That's the main thing about my Momo setup. Next one comes up, and then I got an extreme Momo buy right here. Extreme Momo buy because I'm above 80. Remember, I, I got to stay above 20 on a pullback, but it stays above 80. That's called an extreme Momo. I call this extreme. 
like the sells got can be below 20, which is extreme, and the buys above 80, which is extreme. But you got to have green ATRs. What I'm finding is is that here these three momos back to back typically happen right after you get a good um, explosion outside of my zone. You know the zone trades start these things off. There's another momo, and then three back to back momos this morning off of crude oil. So there's that one. All right, crude. Let me go another one. I mean, we can go to any market you really want. Uh, we can look at, uh, let's see, what else we got? Look at the Dow, I guess. Some traders trade the Dow. So, you know, same exact thing. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get into the zones. We're looking for a zone buy. So when you, when you break through a red ATR, okay, here's another strategy you really got to watch out for. When you break through this red ATR, you're immediately thinking what? You're thinking change of trend. You're looking for this pattern to pull back, come up, explode, change ATR color. This happens on the NASDAQ futures a lot. You're looking for that pullback, that first pullback. There's a full retracement into the zone. And there's my explosion right here on the YM today. Now, this is at the close. Like I said, I'm not cherry picking these. I'm just putting up random charts. So if you look at um, this comes, what I say, after you come out, out of a momentum, I mean a full zone, you go into what's called a momentum zone. So this is a full retrace, full zone retrace, retracement. And then we come right into what? An extreme, not just a pullback. This is an extreme buy right there on the Dow. Extreme because what? We got a we had a red pullback with a red reversal bar back into green. And look, we got an extreme buy momentum. Then we had another pullback momentum, another pullback momentum. You can see it works on the Dow also. So whatever markets that you want to do, it's it's the same setup. It's it's looking for full retracements into momentum. Two setups. Okay? So, that being said, let's go into a little bit more advanced technique since we know the two setups that we like to look for. So, let's go back to the ES. And what I want to show you is obviously on the ES. Let's take a look at the ES at the close. Now, I didn't show you this yet, but the ES close Look at this. What do you think these are? Extreme Momo buys. It started off here with the Momo. You can see a Momo is telling you it's probably going to break through that line. It's probably going to break through the supply line. I mean, the ATR, it did, but look at these extreme buys into the close. You know, you got institutional institutions like to adjust their positions and these algos starting at 1550 every day. 15.58, it told you right there, 62 all the way to 75 into the close. You know, you got yourself 13 S&P points in a matter of um, going into the close uh, just after uh, 4 o'clock. So, you know, let's get into a little bit more advanced. So, obviously, if we get this full retracement with this demand line supply line, I like that. But, but let, let's look at this. Let's go here. Why do we have this chart then over here like this? Why do we have this chart? What's this chart for? I did specific videos on this chart because this chart tells me when there's serious momentum coming in the market. All right, now, if you really want extreme accuracy with the system, here's what you can do. You can combine my ultimate momentum chart, which I have six lines on this, three zones are on this, chart. So three zones. So let's take a look at, and meaning six dots, six dotted lines, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got the shallow zone, intermediate zone, and they got a deep zone. I have videos on this already on the website. I'm not going to detail on this. I have specific videos just on this chart. If you see, and this is why I have this chart on the workspace on the far left, if you see Six red dots print all at once. Six red dots print all at once. Or if you see six green dots print all at once. So let's take a look at this. One sec. Let's 
if you see that happen, six red, print all at once, major possible sell, the market's going vertical, or six green, that tells you the market could go vertical fast and furious to the upside or downside. Because I got six of my zones at printing at, or three of my zones with six lines printing at the same time. So what do you try to do then? How can we time this trade to fire in this market? If I see this happen, where I see six red, it alerts me that I'm looking on the charts I just showed you. So let's go back to here first. It's getting us down. If I see this right at 1501, and I got these other charts right beside it at 1501. So at 1501, it's showing right there, we have a lot of red dots that start printing right here on this congestion. Red dots are starting to print. What am I looking to do? I'm now looking to sell the full retracement on this chart because my momentum chart just told me, it just educated me that this market has six red dots. It's looking to go vertical. So I want to try to get into a retracement. Okay, so at 1512, it finally does. It comes up, I get the full retracement into the zone, and right there it is. Look at that high. Now, you can use a smaller time frame to fire in also at 1512. Let's take a look at it. It should have fired an automated arrow, which it did right there. There's your automated arrow that fired off, and the fill would have been 3948 down to 31 again for that possible 17, 16 and a half, 17 point potential move. It all started with this though. So what I'm saying is, is you can use this momentum chart when it turned all six red or all six green to possibly know when any market, any futures, any Forex, any stock is possibly going to do this. Go vertical. When it turned six green here, that's when the market could potentially go vertical, which it did vertical hard. So what we can do then is we can use this chart, and that's why I have it on our workspace, to let us know when we can possibly come into a full zone on our larger time frame or smaller time frame with an arrow for smaller risk and an entry. Because I want to see the WPTs fire, which I do. Here's an opposite color speed bar. Here's your opposite color speed bar against red ATR that's catching the rolling counter trend traders and look at that sell off. You get really two good shots at it. Here's an optic color speed bar against red ATR, huge sell off. I like what's called wave one and wave two when this turns six red or six green. So here's wave one. Wave one to me is the best. Wave two is the second best. I don't like have an auto trading after wave three, wave four, we have because we could trend change. All right, unless you're in a hard downtrend below LVA or HVA on market profile, you're best just looking for wave one and wave two to turn the auto on if you want automated entries, which I'll go over next, or if you want manual entries off of these zones. But you can see I'm using this chart now to look for full zones. So not only can you just you can you can trade off this chart by itself if you wanted to and look for zones. But I'm showing you how you can look for it on possible big vertical pullbacks. So you can use this chart now, when it turns six red or six green if you want to, to look for full zone retracements. Which ones could possibly be the big ones? And this is a big one. And that was because the market turned all six red right here. All six red, that full retracement, down here was a nice move, okay? So that's what we have. This is called our momentum chart, our six zones, six red, six green. Just look for vertical market and look for retracement inside these two charts with the arrows to fire on your full retracement zones and momentum. Now, let's take a step further. I get this all the time. They're like, Jay, you got this auto trader that is sent out to us and I'm gonna spend a whole 45 minutes next week on the auto because I'm adding a momentum auto that we're sending out to everybody. We're adding a momentum out, I'll go also to add to this, which I'll go, I'm not, I don't have time to go over it today, 
Jira want to keep this at 45 minutes. But I will go over that. The entire session next week for 45 minutes is strictly going to be automated trading with the automator or the auto trader. So we we can then what we can do is we can use we can use automation with a strategy, right? We can use an automated strategy here. We can use these strategies to fire in these trades, right? That's automated. And it, you don't have to do four contracts. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But every time you see the arrow fire, whatever time frame you're using here for auto entry is when the arrow fires at this level on this chart, it's going to fire you in automatically on the other chart. So whatever you trade, and I'm going to show you when this all turns six red or six green. So when this turned six red or six green, was at what? At 1501. So at 1501, at 1501 right there, you see we turn all six red. All right? If you're going to be using automated trading, that is your best time to look at it for wave one, which is here, wave one, and wave two. Or you can manually do it yourself. But for the auto purpose, you can use the auto to fire you in the trade will automatically fill you. It will automatically put your stop in. It will automatically take target targets one, two, three, and four off. I have to go in detail how to specifically use this on our next call next Wednesday at 4.30, which I will. But you can use this to fire in your trades without manually firing in. You just toggle your switch on. It's a double click. It fires it on. And when your first two waves are done, you can fire it back off. Auto trading right here does not work well in CHOP. If the market is sideways, this is not a great strategy. All right. Now, I'm adding a new feature so the auto will only turn on when this happens on 6 red or 6 green. I'm in the process of doing that for my members, meaning what they'll do, it will automatically turn it on and off and only take a certain amount of waves that you decide, wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four. If you want to take the first wave, you type in first wave. It's only going to take this first wave after momentum comes in. So that is what I'm working on now for you guys. But as of now, you can manually do it by yourself. When you manually do this, you double click the auto on and it will fire if it gets six red. If you want to get uh, start practicing with it, you turn it on when it's all six red or if you're in a hard downtrend and you get these WPTs coming in and you want to sell that zone. So you can use this chart to do that with, okay? I also have traders that do this. I'll have traders that go this. They'll see that we're in a downtrend, right? They'll see we're in a major downtrend and we break through LVA or what have you and they see it and they will turn it on when these start printing. Once they see the first WPT print on whether time frame they're trading and they're in a downtrend based upon my other charts, or let's say we're below market profile, OVA or above HVA, they'll turn them on here without the momentum chart even firing. I got traders that do that with the system. So you can do that if you'd like. Now we're going to go over how to do the momentum setup next week and then also uh, with the strategy. And, but let me just show you in the meantime how you can do this. So when you turn this thing off, we're going to go over all the details next week. But just to get you started, if you're new to this, whatever your indicator you're using and working well for your manual trading, the strategy is designed to emulate the indicator. It's the same thing. So my indicator is exactly should be programmed exactly the same as my strategy, right? 54, 38, there's your zones, which you can change if you want. Um, I leave zone unchecked. If you only take zone trades, you can click that. What's got to be two closes inside the zone. 
but I leave it to take all trades inside and outside the zone because I don't want to miss momentum trades. But I will go over each detail next week how to do this. Um, the trade size, so let's go over this real quick. We'll go over zone ticks on how to all this stuff next week because I need a good 45 minutes to go over this. Uh, but and all this stuff. But if you just want to get started, here's your target one through target four. If you want to change, come down and do entries per direction. So let's say you just want to look for zone entries off of one contract. Change that to one. Enable it. Once that's enabled, then we're only going to do one contract for your first target. See, it only does one. If you wanted, there's one. See, one. If you wanted to do two, then change your entry direction to two. Okay? You get, you get my drift. Now, I want to show you something in a second. And I'll go over this next week. Now, it's doing target one, target two. And here's your break even plus one. Or if you want, don't want to do break even plus one, I'll show you how to do negative ticks. Like I said, it's this auto is pretty involved. I need a whole 45 minutes to go over it, which I'll go in the next series four. But if you want to go, let's say that you want to go five. Let's make an odd number, five. This is what I want to show you. So let's go with an odd number five. What it's going to do, all right, it's never going to expose you more than five contracts ever. So if you're trading the micros and if, uh, or if you're trading the big contract, and listen, you have to sign a disclaimer for the auto trade. You know, these obviously are educational tools. You know, there's no guarantee in the market that, that you're going to make money. I mean, we all know that. That's why you sign the disclaimers that you, that you sign. What I educate traders, if you do trade live, start with the micros. If you can't make money with the micros on manual trading or auto trading, why in the heck would you risk all that money on a big contract? It's just That's just me. You guys do whatever you want with your, your own monies. You know, we, we, we supply the educational software. I try to help you guys with that. But micros are a great way to understand how this works. So the micros, let's say it went four contracts short here. I got, I got a full four contracts short. Sold one, sold two, sold three. Then it got stopped out because of the profit level two. It'll automatically stop out there, which I'm going to go over next week why it does that. But it will only go short then um, if you if it still has a runner. Only it will only go short the maximum number of five contracts. All right. So if you still got a runner running, it's only going to be short a maximum number of five, not four or three, et cetera, and I'm going to go over all that stuff next week. But the, the great thing about the, the auto to use is the best time to use it is when you're coming into a full retracement. You're coming. I love when you get momentum off of this chart because you get that wave one, wave two, and shut the auto back off. The best way to do it is toggle on and off. Just double click, click the strategy under your, um, under your Ninja Trader. It turns on, turns off. But this is when you really need to look at doing the autos in and autos out, right? You want it now, you want to have your stop based upon the time frame you trade. So if you're going to auto in off of a zone trade, let's say we're coming up and we're in the zone here, then make sure that you put the amount of ticks based upon the bar size you use. So if you use a 120.20, you're going to have a larger stop because you want two ticks above the swing high. If you use a 113.13, then you can get away with a 16 tick stop, right? So, you know, these stops would be, that'd be a 16 tick because the size is 13, 13. Your fill would be at this level. Now, let me go over one more thing because it's important. So there would be your entry off this arrow. And your stop would be outside of 16 up here. What if you want to get into smaller, and I'm going to go over this next week in detail also. What if you want to get into smaller stops on pullbacks? So this, so uni bars, what they like to do is you get a signal the arrow fires, right? What the uni bar likes to do, it likes to retrace back up. It likes to retrace back up. So you get short right here at 39.50, and then all of a sudden you see it pop back up, and you see your dome is going 
it goes up, it's going up, and you're like, oh my God, it's at 52. It went against you eight ticks. It goes against eight ticks right here, and then it just crashes, right? That's what unis do. So then it just crashes down and gets rolling. I'm going to show you how you can use hotkeys. So hotkeys is a way where you can come in and you can use hotkeys where I'm going to show you how to use hotkeys where you go to order entry and minus, I have it minus six right here, plus and minus six ticks, but you can edit it to anything you want. You know, some traders like minus or plus four ticks or what have you, or some like eight on the NASDAQ, nine on the NASDAQ. What it's telling you is this, is when that arrow comes in, what you can do is have a hot key, let's say an F key, like F5 would be a buy, an F8 uh, would be a sell. So right when this arrow fires, you would hit the hot key. And the hot key on your, on, your, on your computer would automatically do what? It would put a limit order in on this backfill right here. Minus eight ticks of where price is at. And the reason I'm telling you this is uni bars trading off larger unis, they like to retrace. And once you get used to this, you're going to find out if you just trade normally and you hit the off or hit the bid, your fill is going to be to load that bar. But what happens is you get a retracement. So now you get a retracement. Usually it's between 50% of the bar right there to 35 to 50% of the bar on any given market. It likes to retrace right in the zone. So what you can do is the hotkey, after you get this arrow, you hit your F9 if that's your cell, which is you already put it in on your chart trader, and I'll show you how to do it next week. You already put it in minus eight ticks. So it's going to put a limit order in right here, minus eight ticks. So when the market does come back up and hit this level, now your stop is not the full, right? It's not the full right here. So this bar is a, what am I on here? I'm on a 113.13. So now I'm not 13 ticks now, am I? Because I just took eight away, right? So now my, my, the high up to this bar is five ticks. So five ticks plus two is seven ticks. So now you can have a seven tick stop or eight tick stop if you use an eight tick retracement. What I like to do because you get slippage on this is I give it an extra four ticks. So if you are in the middle of the bar or down around 30% of the bar and the bar is five ticks, I'll make it nine ticks. I always add four ticks to give me in case I get slippage. You always get slippage if it keeps going down. Let's say it goes down, you hit your hot key down here, then obviously you want to have a little more, you know, up there. So you can play with the hot key that way, but I'm going to show you how to do that with the unis. You don't have to just sell the bid or buy the offer with these guys. I'm going to show you how to use hot keys to get in, or you can use the automated strategy right here. You know, I like if you know how to manually trade this, you're really going to, enjoy how to do the auto because you're going to know when to turn it on and turn it off. This auto should not be turned on and turned, uh, turned on during chop. You need to be trending. And I'm going to show you how to trend next week. We're going to go over trend filters on when this should be turned on and turned off, like the momentum chart, and we'll go over all that stuff. All right, so that's series three, guys. That's series three. Sorry these things are taking so long, but I got so much information to go over with this stuff. But let's let's keep it simple. Let's go with uh, let's go with our momentum setup and our zone setup. You can use the larger time frames to enter to 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 find out when you're at a, a deep retracement inside the zone, and also with the with the momentum setups. But you can use the smaller time frames to fire in the trades. Consequently, is you can use hotkeys to look for reverse. I mean, look for pullbacks after an entry comes up. So if my entry is here and the arrow fires, I'm at a full retracement, and I get an arrow that fires, I automatically hit the hotkey. It puts a limit order in, eight ticks back, six ticks back, whatever you want. Some traders like to use eight ticks back on crude oil off the 120.20. Eight ticks works really good on crude. NASDAQ futures, I like eight ticks back. That's what I prefer. Some of you like 10. That's fine. The ES, I like four to six. Uh, you're going to miss some trades using hotkeys, but at least you get smaller stops and you get continuations, all right? So um, that's a good way to do it also, all right? So next week, series four, I will be going over, I will be going over 
strictly automation. Okay? The, the, the stops remain the same, Dave. When you change the number of contracts, the stops and targets remain the same. Yes, when you double click the on and off strategy, so when you go into your strategies, you have a strategies tab. Once you go into your strategies tab on NinjaTrader, you'll see enabled. Once you double click enabled, it will come on in about one and a half seconds, it will turn green. Once it turns green, this strategy is enabled. If you double click it and turn it back off, then this strategy will disable itself and not turn green. What I suggest you do, and I educate traders, make sure you go into positions before you leave to make sure you have no live positions open at all. None. And make sure you close them out. Also, if you're doing live, and I'm going to go over this in detail on automation next week, if you go live and you're, autom and you're in automation and your computer goes down, those are not resting orders. They're not sitting at, uh, at, at your broker uh, probably. You need to have your number and your account number ready if you do automation. Anything can happen. A storm can happen. You can have a blackout. The ninja trader crashes. It freezes. You know, the best thing to do, what I've always educated traders, call your broker, flatten the position, give me your account number, say flatten all. And that way you don't get a big headache. I mean, that's why strategy, strategy running and automation, it's, it's a dangerous game if you don't know what you're doing. So you I'll try to educate you the best I can next week. You know, that's why, you know, I like you understanding manually how to do these things. But once you get automation down, it's it's not hard to understand. Um, and if you know the risk involved and, and how to do it, then uh, some traders actually really like it when the market's setting up in certain situations. Okay, especially if we are trending down or hard up above LV and HVA. Okay. Hey, thanks, Gerald.